Welcome to Metamorphosis, Part 1, NDNP Metadata. As you know, the goal of the National Digital Newspaper Program is to enhance access to historical newspapers. To make this happen, we follow a technical approach that balances long-term sustainability and shorter-term constraints. At a very high level, the NDNP technical approach is based on images, page-level OCR, multiple copies of files, a website, and reliable, consistent metadata to support an open access digital repository. In this installment of Metamorphosis Online, we'll focus on this last point, NDNP metadata. Now, if you're new to the NDNP specification, you may find yourself intimidated by the plethora of acronyms and level of detail involved in the metadata, but there's a reason for every piece of the metadata, so um, let's break them down for you. The NDNP specification was designed to use pre-existing widely used standards and to support the best practices of today's digital library preservation needs. Why start from scratch when we have access to these existing standards? For instance, bibliographic information already exists for most newspapers in the form of MARC catalog records, and MODS is designed to work with this MARC bibliographic data. Premise and mixed schemas are well designed to carry preservation and technical metadata, Alto, an open XML standard to describe OCR text and layout information of printed documents, works great with newspapers. And of course, METS is used as a wrapper to carry all this metadata. In a previous session of Metamorphosis, you learned the basics of metadata. You may remember that there is descriptive, structural, and administrative metadata. NDNP has all of that. The NDNP specification relies first and foremost on descriptive metadata that probably already exists, and that is in a MARC record. For NDNP, the MARC metadata gets transformed into the MARC XML format and then into MODS objects that reside in the METS records. So speaking of MARC records, when selecting content to digitize as part of a project using NDNP, you'll need to identify an original print newspaper title catalog record. NDNP participants are required to upgrade the print records to concert level records if they aren't already. I won't get into the full detail of what is required in a good concert level newspaper record, but I will mention that for NDNP, we use the LCCN as the unique identifier for a title. We don't use ISSN numbers since many historic newspapers don't actually have ISSNs. I should also mention that in order for your records to actually work with the Chronicling America collection, the LCCN should be normalized. Other descriptive metadata is collected as part of the microfilm or newspaper collation process. Information such as the newspaper's volume number, issue number, edition number, date, section information, page numbers, and source repository are just a few examples. Structural metadata is very important for newspapers. Think about a real microfilm. It, it might contain multiple titles. Each title has several issues, and each issue has several pages. And when digitized, there are multiple digital files to represent a single page. So when you have all that content on the reel, these many, many pages stay together by virtue of being on the single reel. When digitized, we introduce the possibility of losing those connections. Enter METS. NDNP uses METS, which is the Metadata Encoding and Transmission Standard. METS is an XML format designed specifically to handle complex objects, and I don't have to tell you how complex newspapers can be. Using METS structural maps and structural links helps keep all the various parts in the intended order. I'll show you the NDNP METS templates a little later in the presentation. Administrative metadata provides information necessary to manage digital objects over time and encompasses both technical and preservation metadata. For NDNP, administrative metadata includes information about microfilm reels, such as reduction ratio, dimensions, density readings, position, and other information collected from the film. Additionally, administrative metadata is used to carry information about who created the digital files, uh, what type of software they used, uh, when the files were created, and what compression schemes were used, just to name a few items. We incorporate components of both premise and mix standards in NDNP. Premise stands for the Preservation Metadata Maintenance Activity, and mix stands for Metadata for Images in XML. Luckily, the DVV, or Digital Viewer and Validator tool used for NDNP, We'll add the premise and mix metadata for you, but for more information, you can check out the websites for each standard. Digital signatures are also part of the administrative metadata for NDNP, and these are also created and inserted into the METS files by the DVV I mentioned earlier, and these ensure data integrity over time. Once created, we can check and recheck the digital signatures for accuracy. You can learn a lot more about the DVV and digital signatures from the NDNP technical website, and if you're an NDNP awardee, from the awardee wiki. 
To make sense of the NDNP metadata, it helps to know a little bit more about the digital object model for an NDNP batch. In addition to the page level digital images and OCR, metadata is delivered, organized by the batch, issue, and RIA level. Specifically, in a batch, there exists a delivery batch object, an issue object, and a RIA object. At LC, we commonly refer to these as the batch XML files, the real XML files, and the issue XML files. We say files, plural, because once the DVV is used for the validation process, a validated file will be created. So in the end, you'll have two batch files for every batch, two real XML files for every real, and two issue XML files for every issue. I think this will make much more sense if I show you. This is an example of what a validated NDNP batch looks like through Windows Explorer. At the top level, we have the batch folder. Everything should be inside this folder. At the next level, we have folders for each title, represented by the LCCN. Notice here are the batch XML files. The underscore one means that this has been validated. The batch files are in a sense like a table of contents of what's in the batch. Now going inside the LCCN folder, you'll next see folders for each real. For NDNP, we use the LC provided barcode number as the real identifier. For projects that are digitized from the original print, we simply use the word print instead of a barcode number. Inside a real directory, you'll then see images and OCR for the targets. Including microfilm targets, which is covered in a previous session of Metamorphosis, is optional, but if they are included, your vendor should include the same exact derivatives and OCR processing as if they were newspaper pages. And as I said before, you'll also have real XML files for every real. These are also named with the real barcode, and one will have an underscore one to indicate it has been validated. Also inside the real folder, which what do you think these folders are? They look exactly like dates. Finally, we get to newspaper issues. For each issue, there will be an issue folder. Inside the issue folder are the derivatives and OCR for each page. See, in this example, there is a TIFF, JPEG 2000, PDF, and an Alto OCR XML file for each page of the newspaper. Files should be named in a four-digit one-up manner, as you see here, according to the order of appearance on the scanned reel. More on this is found in the technical specs document that I'll show you soon. Uh, inside the issue folder will also be the issue XML files. These METS files contain the descriptive information about the issue, including LCCN, date, edition and section info, and page numbers. The issue XML files also describe how the digital files for each page relate to each other and form an issue. Each batch will have a unique name constructed as batch underscore awardee mark org code underscore keyword. All characters used in a batch name should be lowercased and limited to two underscores. Each keyword will be alphabetic and unique to a given awardee throughout the participation in the program. So if you're a new awardee, please be creative. Don't use the NATO alphabet as we've had several awardees already use that. Pick a theme such as flora, cities, stars, philosophers, whatever you want. So where is this NDNP technical specification documented? Uh, whether you're a current NDNP participant or not, the NDNP technical specification is documented and freely available for you on the NDNP technical website. On this site, you can find the latest profiles and schemas currently in use. In addition to the image file formats profiles, you'll find the METS XML templates that I mentioned earlier and the very, very useful metadata dictionary. Now we've covered a lot in this session of Metamorphosis, but we're just getting started. And the next session of NDNP Metadata, I'll introduce you to the NDNP Digital Asset Metadata Elements Dictionary, or the Metadata Dictionary. This is a great resource for you and your vendor for making sense of and troubleshooting the spec. So until next time, normalize those LCCNs, read up on the NDNP technical website, and most importantly of all, don't panic. Mm -hmm.